Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. We apologize for the delay. We're always, we always try to be on time, but uh, we got informed that some of the streets were blocked uh, and we had to give some time to those who wanted to come and join us. Welcome to the sixth round of uh, uh, the Dialogues uh, event. Uh, this is a monthly event uh, that the Stavros Nyarkos Foundation has organized in order to bring us into contact with people who can give us inspiration. This is a, a, a way to exchange uh, experience uh, dialogues try to shed light uh, on issues that are of our concern in the foundation, social welfare, health, education. Since the day we started in July 2017, many uh, topics have uh, been presented, health, love. Uh, today we have a different uh, topic dedicated followers of fashion. Anna Kintia Puzduku is the moderator. You have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Elena. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome uh, our guest uh, speakers, uh, our members of the panel. We will uh, actually discuss uh, here today about an issue that we either love or an issue that uh, might uh, seem insignificant for some others, uh, but uh, it depends on uh, the point of view, uh, under which prism do you uh, actually observe uh, fashion. Uh, everybody knows something about fashion. Uh, on a daily basis, uh, we actually uh, open up our wardrobe and try to find something to wear. And this is our main concern. Today, we will try to discuss and think about some other issues that concern fashion, issues that have nothing to do with our wardrobe. We will discuss with people who follow fashion in their own different way. We have to, with us, uh, Dimitris Petru, the fashion designer, uh, who is a young uh, Greek that has a lot to show in this Greece of the crisis. Uh, he is an excellent example. Uh, why should somebody follow this uh, career in Greece? Uh, and how do you survive at the end of the day? Now we also have Mrs. Uh, Fiori Zafiropoulou. She is the country coordinator of the global movement fashion revolution in Greece and co-founder of the social fashion factory SOFA. It is interesting to see how we can have a social entrepreneurship in fashion and what does social entrepreneurship mean in fashion. What happened and uh, gave birth to this fashion uh, and revolution movement? And then we also have Nancy Spathy with us. She is a fashion blogger. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We used the social media and um, whether we follow them or not, we definitely know that there are pe people who love fashion, who love to follow trends. And uh, it's very interesting to see how technology uh, was introduced uh, in fashion and what is hidden behind it. Is it easy for everybody? Can everybody do it or not? And we also have uh, Effie Falida. Uh, she is a journalist uh, from the newspaper Tanea. She is a reporter on, uh, on fashion issues. Uh, you have seen yourself uh, that in the past we had many fashion editorials. We had a different face of the fa of fashion, and today things are different. So it's per very interesting to see this uh, different reading. 
Let me add that uh, we uh, actually have uh, uh, the coincidence of having uh, an exhibition at the same time. It is called the Diary of uh, Seamstress. And uh, the question is, what changed our mentality? Uh, why? Do we actually go to a seamstress or a tailor to uh, transform a piece of clothing uh, or to mend a piece of clothing? Let me also welcome those who are watching us live through the live streaming. And uh, let me tell you that uh, we are uh, expecting to hear your views. Uh, we want to have your participation, listen to your questions, and in general, have your contribution in uh, our discussion, snf.org slash questions. That's uh, the online platform which can receive questions and comments. We are following that constantly, and whatever comes uh, from you will be included in the discussion. Anyway, I've talked too much. It's the biggest introduction I've ever had in a, an event like this. So uh, I would like to ask you, is it a luxury to start such a discussion here among us? Uh, many people think, OK, we have so many problems. Fashion is not something that uh, has to do with our daily life. Uh, In my view, it's not a luxury, uh, since fashion pertains to clothing, accessories, our appearance, etc. To me, fashion is a general concept, a broader concept. Uh, at a magic, in a magic moment, uh, a, some minds uh, have grasped it, and they have um, been able to communicate this concept and then lead to the establishment of a trend. An example would be the fact that, that even in the, this uh, great venue that uh, hosts us today, someone has had an inspiration and has um, built something. Everyone can come and visit the venue and uh, have fun, etc. So speaking in broader terms, I think that um, the f to speak about fashion is not a luxury because fashion has many aspects. Uh, I don't know if you would like to make a comment on that. You are free to intervene whenever you want. I'd like to add uh, to what Dimitri said. Indeed, I would like to say that uh, fashion is all around us uh, since um, We experience everything that is new, and through everything that's new, we discover things that we want to experience. So fashion is about food, is about clothing, or um, entertainment, or our daily lives, even our holidays, the way we choose to spend our free time. All this belongs to the fashion cloud, and this is what feeds our desire, the desire of everyone to have tidbits of um, joy. So I think that my fashion will never cease to exist uh, as long as this whole system of uh, people, communication, and personal uh, relations um, will be able to feed it. Um, one could say that uh, the identification that sometimes uh, is done, that whatever is fashionable is uh, expensive, or one has to have uh, quite a lot of money if one wants to follow fashion. Is this a stereotype or not? Yes, definitely this is a stereotype because at the same time fashion is whatever you can process um, yourself and adjust uh, to your own uh, tastings, uh, to your own likings. Wherever you are, you can uh, choose whatever you like and put your own taste in that. This is what is positive about fashion today. You are invited to play and become a stylist for your own self, become a magician, a creator who will be able to pick from the expensive stuff as well as from the cheaper stuff. So we can get rid of this um, exclusivity 
of uh, fashion. We can uh, receive information to discover new fashion. Uh, Dimitri said something uh, inspired by the venue. Uh, he said that it is a very fashionable thing to visit um, the uh, cultural center of uh, Stavros Nyarkos Foundation because we will all uh, upload um, our own selfies, etc. Uh, when we visit uh, the cultural center. However, Dimitri um, referred to this person who uh, had the inspiration that led to the building of this venue. What about clothing? What is the value of me knowing who has um, manufactured, who has prepared my clothing? Fashion is something really beautiful. It's something really glamorous, but unfortunately, behind fashion, there are many sad stories, and it is important for us to know that fashion is the second polluter after oil. And we also should know that um, in fashion, we have um, the uh, second industry in human trafficking after the sex industry. We have 21 million people working in fashion um, who are in forced labor. So uh, the uh, answer in uh, the question, uh, who has made my clothes, is not these are made in China. We need to know where exactly they have been made. Uh, the retailers need to know where they are from. So there needs to be transparency. The fashion revolution movement that celebrates its fifth anniversary this year uh, was um, established following a Rana Plaza accident in Bangladesh where a factory uh, collapsed and uh, there were many deaths of um, fashion workers uh, there. So those who are working in fashion, in the fashion industry, have uh, joined forces and they participated in this uh, movement. This week is the Fashion Revolution Week. Uh, We have been active in 102 countries. We love fashion. It's uh, a um, crowd of designers, producers, consumers, etc. But we don't want fashion to be exploiting people and we don't want to fashion to pollute the environment. The way we communicate that is mainly through our social media, through hashtags. Um, we have um, photographs of um, our uh, clothes um, and hashtag. We tag our retailers and ask them, who made my clothes? So thousands of um, uh, producers gave an answer through a hashtag, I made your clothes. And uh, they gave us an analytical list of um, where the clothes have been uh, fabricated. We'll be watching a brief video clip but that you are going to explain where it came from. But before that, uh, let me tell you that we were able to also uh, watch another video clip um, uh, in our monitors. Maybe you can um, give us a brief introduction so that we can better understand what Fashion Revolution is all about. Aside from being a country coordinator for the Fashion uh, Revolution movement, uh, I have also another capacity. We try to uh, give an answer to the problems caused by fashion. And through the Fashion Revolution uh, team, five years ago in Greece, we started to create a social factory. I'm talking about a factory that is owned by uh, many and not by just one industrialist. A third problem with fashion is that it has um, uh, been sent to third countries. We have a textile industry that um, has uh, Uh, collapsed in Europe and in Greece. So we've been talking about uh, a big mass of people, of uh, young people, creators, designers, etc., who are really innovative vis-a-vis their materials and their proposals, but uh, they are um, geographically spread and they suffer from um, very high marginal costs. So we grouped together and we thought that we should buy equipment together 
it made sense for us to say that uh, we should give work to uh, those populations who have suffered from the collapse of the fashion industry. So we tried to include uh, human trafficking victims. Uh, we then had the refugees issues and um, those the population who is at risk of being a, a trafficking victim are refugees. So we started addressing uh, ourselves to these uh, people and it made sense to use uh, sustainable materials. Um, yes, this is important. We need to see how this will manage to survive. This effort will manage to survive. But let us watch the video clip. Let me broaden the discussion a little bit and start with a provocative question first uh, to Dimitris and then we will hear everybody. If a consumer has uh, the possibility to and the capacity to go into a store and buy a t-shirt with 20 euros or a pair of trousers Why don't we do that? Uh, why shouldn't we do that and come to a designer? Well, let me just uh, say that uh, I work mainly sur mesure. In other words, uh, I create uh, uh, male and female clothes uh, which fit 
the requirements of uh, the customer. And, uh, you know, we all have very cheap clothes in our wardrobe. But let me say it uh, more generally in order to be more understandable. It is your choice what you will eat, where you will sleep, how you will get dressed. If you choose to buy clothes that are cheap, uh, well, uh, that's okay. This is a need. Uh, I don't have very high prices as a designer. Let me just make that clear. So it's a matter of personal choice what you select and has nothing to do uh, with uh, where the piece of clothing was made. It also has to do with your with the raw materials. Is uh, the fabric uh, friendly to your skin? Is it cotton? Is it uh, silk? Is it wool? Is it a synthetic material? So, what is your uh, experience? How do you uh, easy is it to have uh, access to raw materials? In Greece, where the fashion industry is not much developed, it is not very easy to find the raw materials that you ideally have in your mind to create something. But there are quality elements, quality things that you could use in order to create something that seems right for the people who want to use uh, it on a daily basis. Nancy, you're following Instagram, the social media, the internet. You have followers. What are the ages of your followers? I suppose that they're young people or people who can follow uh, the rate of growth of technology. Uh, in order to be able to follow what you do. What are the trends today in consumption? Well, we will all fall in the trap of buying something that is very, very cheap. But then it's important to see what kind of perceptions we have for our clothes. Is it a consumable or not? Today, that people don't have much money and can't make ends meet, uh, they have to think twice about uh, which type of clothes they will buy. They should think about whether they want to use this uh, uh, piece of clothing uh, for a second uh, season, uh, how it was made, where it was made. Uh, how easy is it uh, to have a uh, a ta- to create a tailor-made piece of clothing uh, and uh, how designers deal with it. And they come back to your initial example. I know who made this cloth and what was the procedure he or she followed. This tailor-made product, is it also something that creates a relationship Well, of course, because uh, it's something that started from zero. It was cut and uh, um, made uh, by the tailor uh, to fit your taste and your body. You know it's unique, it's for you, it's for a special event probably, for a special occasion, and uh, it is very valuable. And, uh, you know, uh, you saw on the video when you were coming into this room, there was a a lady uh, who referred to the value of uh, measuring feet and create sandals. But my my customers um, may buy from me once and then come back, not to buy something else, but to say hello. It's a human relationship. And 
that's what we uh, have been discussing. Why have you selected to wear black and white? You are all in black and white today. Well, I have an answer for you. Fashion makes us want to, to be different, to stick out, to be the ones, to have our own clothes. But at the same time, subconsciously, uh, we have the need to belong to somewhere. And, you know, it seems that this need made us wear black and white today without having discussed between us. What is the world that is opening uh, before our eyes? It's uh, the world of psychology, I think. Yes, that's something, that's a parameter that we ha- didn't have in mind when we started this event. Uh, there are okay, cases where we focus on something different than we should. But let's look at clothes. What are the codes behind clothes? And uh, the so-called dress code. How is it defined? Why do I go to my office dressed in a certain way? Why do I go out dressed in a certain way? Well, this is ha- this has to do with our times. We are in a free, democratic uh, society. And this is in contradiction to the past. Uh, You know, when did fashion start? Uh, It was uh, with the Industrial Revolution, with modernization, when stereotypes and protocols were were, uh, left behind. Because in the past, uh, clothes symbolized uh, power. And you had different clothes uh, for noble people and different clothes for workers or slaves. In the industrial era, we had uh, this new quest for something new, for something unknown. And fashion became a message, a call to the people surrounding us to get to learn who we are. So I dress in a certain way to invite people to get to know me, to bring people closer to me, to intrigue them in order to ask more about me. Sometimes uh, there is this love game uh, in the way we dress. Uh, We have a body that uh, actually tries to show uh, a difference from others. Uh, Sometimes we try to stick out by a more discreet way. In our office, we try to be clean, uh, but uh, also not uh, too informative about the clothes we wear. The information is uh, provided to others when we go out. Uh, At night, for instance, we tell people, this is who I am, come and get to know me. Very interesting way of thinking. I was uh, uh, discussing with Fiori about uh, the conditions uh, under which uh, clothes are being produced, manufactured. And here in Greece, we have had uh, many instances of brands. And I also refer to very well-known brands as well. They have, uh, let's say, a line which is uh, friendlier uh, to the environment. Uh, uh, Maybe it's two or three euros more expensive, but they have, uh, these lines have a a label which says that uh, my raw materials are clean. And we go to the cashier, we pay two or three euros extra, and we have our conscious clear, consciousness clear. Uh, but can we actually uh, see that as uh, consumers? Can we verify that this is true? Well, this is the so-called greenwashing. Uh, you know, Dimitris asked me, what happens to this whole uh, bunch of clothes that are being de- recycled? It seems that from uh, the clothes that are being uh, recycled, only 1% is actually recycled. 
The rest is sold uh, with the kilo, and uh, it is uh, more. Uh, it is easier to uh, make money like that. So it is interesting to see what we do with these labels. If we, as consumers, actually want to love fashion and use fashion, but we are also uh, conscious about uh, the environment, we don't want to exploit other people, we should follow uh, this uh, uh, fashion revolution initiative. We have many uh, we have the fashion transparency index. Uh, it has to do with the brands, uh, retailers, producers. We get uh, information about the way clothes uh, were manufactured and produced and you see whether rights are infringed. Uh, None of the brands goes beyond 58%. Uh, what does this mean? We're on the average. We have a long way ahead. But, you know, uh, we uh, uh, had uh, uh, more pressure on ourselves, and we actually have uh, 5% more than we had. Uh, first, we had uh, the reaction with Reebok, but then we have zero brands, uh, Dior, Longchamp. brands like Dior, Gucci, Hugo Bosch, Burberry have a 10% increase in their transparency uh, since last year and they are now around 40% and we that's why why is that because we put pressure on them I was thinking about the next question. I was wondering whether the expensive label matches not only the signature of the designer, but uh, also matches uh, a higher transparency. No, unfortunately not. Um, we see, unfortunately, that many luxury brands, and this is the reason why they don't uh, let us know about their uh, suppliers, etc., or the materials, etc., we unfortunately see that many brands are produced more or less in the same factories. Uh, this is what we learn. So, we're not talking about this type of um, manufacturing that uh, you've been using uh, in your own case, Dimitris, but we'd, we see that there is a huge profit margin. And uh, we, of course, obviously do not boycott anyone. We do not boycott uh, production in Asia or, nor in Europe, but we simply claim that um, at the time of um, consumption, at the time of uh, the purchase of the product, we need to ask to put questions uh, be them for Gucci or for Chanel, etc. We want to know where was the factory that this item has been produced in. Who has worked for that? It is not by chance that we have 21 million people. Figures sometimes are misleading. We were talking about some cheap pieces of clothing, etc. Well, I wonder, can we produce uh, uh, t-shirts um, at a cost of two uh, euros. So we tried to do that in the Greek market and uh, we asked uh, the producers to let us know where they produce them, where they manufacture them. And uh, we also found um, uh, t-shirts produced uh, at uh, half a euro price. But we have refugee children working in Turkey uh, for in these factories. So there have been uh, Thousands of children who have gone missing since 2016, and there are refugees. It has to do with our consciousness as consumers, and there are many brands from which we can choose. If one considers the trends uh, that are being shaped and the different forms of clothes, aside from uh, the uh, forms of consumption, as we've seen them uh, to date. We observe, I don't know if this is a, a current phenomenon or not, and maybe Efes and Dimitris will be helping us more on that. We observe that there have been many references either to history, to the Greek traditional clothes, uh, to established designs that symbolize uh, something, for instance, um, religious uh, traits, 
I was uh, reading uh, about uh, the Spring uh, Fair of Costume Institute, and uh, there's going to be a dialogue between uh, fashion and medieval art uh, from the collection of the Metropolitan uh, Museum of New York, uh, trying to see the link between uh, fashion and uh, the traditions of Catholicism. Is this a dialogue that we just see being opened, or was this a case uh, that existed in the past as well? As everything, fashion is uh, constantly evolving, and it is being translated uh, with uh, the uh, spirit of each era. It has started from the need for one to put clothes on in a very specific society. And the more, uh, the, the, the more we go on, uh, as time goes uh, by, we see that there is a, a trend towards uh, old uh, fashion trends. Uh, it's something that we will keep on Coming across it, uh, whenever the cycle is uh, completed, uh, we will start again from scratch. I think that the Effie would be in a better position to answer that. Uh, yes, well, I'd like to make this uh, uh, much more impressive. It is uh, really impressive to see how we visit the past in order to identify new elements that we can process. And this is what's uh, positive uh, about uh, tradition. Um, if we have uh, something that is traditional and that has been seen uh, through the eyes of the past, we give it a fresh look uh, and interpret it in a different way. So we'll show you how the Greek fashion and how the Greek style has influenced um, Greek designers as well as uh, international uh, designer houses. And we'll see how there is this constant um, quest uh, uh, during the years of crisis where we saw the Greek design flourish. It gave a fresher look. We see this through accessories <laughs> mainly, but also in clothes. We see things that um, are more fashionable. I will try to demonstrate what I mean by that. So this is uh, a magazine, La Mode Grecque, um, that was published in 1933. Uh, the uh, Greek uh, tourism organization was um, publishing this, and it was under the auspices of Nikos Ekonopoulos, the artist. This was published twice a year in three languages, English, German, and French, aiming at disseminating Greek culture through fashion, through Greek, the Greek element. This address is by a designer, and Evangelidis had drawn that, or rather Egonopoulos corrects the speaker, And it um, demonstrates the idyllic picture of Greece at that time. Uh, we can see a tsuchlos uh, uh, dress that imitates an ancient uh, sculpture from the classical era, the, where the uh, photographer has taken the model um, near ancient um, ruins and monuments, you see this uh, scene last year uh, by Chanel. Of course, uh, Karl Lagerfeld did not have the opportunity to come and present this uh, um, in our own, um, uh, next to our own um, monuments. Um, Gucci had already been banned, so Langerfeld um, uh, built um, a copy of uh, an ancient Greek temple and uh, was inspired by Greek um, antiquity, and he uh, named his own collection uh, Modern Antiquity. This is a dress by Sofia Kokosalaki, designed in 2016, which is currently being presented in uh, the exhibition of uh, the Diary of a Seamstress, um, uh, 
together with other artists' works. Uh, Sofia Kokosalaki follows uh, this uh, line of the um, ancient Greek chic that um, has been uh, followed by many designers in the past decades uh, as a version of the simple um, evening chic. And uh, we go on uh, to a a past um, interpretation and visit to the Greek um, tradition by Jean-Paul Gautier, who created his own um, haute couture uh, um, collection. Uh, I think that this was back in uh, 2006. Um, He was inspired by his visits in um, the Bernanke Museum. You can see here an excellent piece. Uh, We see a photograph from the recent uh, visit of um, uh, President Macron and uh, Madame Brigitte Macron um, next uh, to uh, the uh, presidential guard. You see how this photograph depicts the uh, mixing of uh, the two um, styles. And here we see a uh, group of uh, women who uh, are uh, involved in embroidery. And uh, they are assigned by a Greek company that has uh, been recently established using elements from this wealth of tradition and from uh, the designs that we see in uh, Greek um, costumes. in um, pottery, even um, in our uh, houses in uh, uh, the islands, etc. We see elements of architecture, art, and folk art. Everything can be turned into fashion. And to conclude, this is uh, a pile of clothes. Uh, This is devoted to Fiori and to her effort. Uh, I'd like to show here that uh, a, a big collective, uh, which is quite in fashion, uh, Vetman, six months ago, decorated with a pile of clothes uh, the uh, windows in Bergford in uh, New York, giving a realistic example as to what fashion means today. This shows that we don't have time to assimilate uh, fashion. This shows how uh, clothes end up. Well, indeed, um, listening and uh, watching to what you have presented, I can tell you that this was a very condensed um, review of um, the world of clothing, of uh, symbolism, and of this dialogue between tradition and the clothing industry. Now, Harrods, too, we have seen respective uh, windows in um, the Harrods store with um, a clothing that had not been sold, etc. Yes, they too try to do that because they try to identify the trends uh, that befit uh, the style of the era and uh, they emph- place emphasis on the needs of people, they process them, they give them a better uh, package and they uh, let us have this um, image following this fashion revolution uh, trend, uh, which means uh, no to fast food fashion, fast fashion. We need to recycle. Recycling does not mean that we will be uh, uh, putting uh, the uh, clothes on uh, the garbage bin, but rather we give them new life uh, through a seamstress or through exchanges in uh, uh, friendly bazaars, etc. This allows us to know the origin of the clothes and to curb uh, this uh, irrational consumption. Let's now come to today's uh, customs and habits. Let's listen to Nancy. Please tell us, how did we come to the point of having fashion bloggers? What are fashion bloggers? And something else I need to clarify for the needs of this discussion. In order to be able to decodify some uh, uh, things and be able to communicate with each other, we named uh, um, 
Nancy, a fashion blogger. She never uses this term, not even on her blog. And that's interesting because there is this undeclared war against fashion bloggers. Who are they? What are they uh, supposed to be doing? Let's listen to you, Nancy. Thank you. Let me first tell you that uh, uh, the internet and technological developments, this speed, this immediacy of our times actually brought us to this point. Uh, print materials have been replaced by digital materials. So fashion is now being communicated through the social media and the internet. This is why we exist. The fashion bloggers are girls of uh, next door who try to present fashion to make it simpler, uh, more day-to-day, and bring it closer to consumers, to make it more understandable. Now, uh, this undeclared war against fashion bloggers that you said before, that you mentioned before, is something that uh, came to Greece with a certain delay, but it's here now. It's a fashion. It's a trend. I don't deny it. It's democratic. It's fair. Everybody can do it. Uh, The judge is people, the audience. Anybody can create a website and present their job from there. Uh, For me, it was a hobby, a pleasant hobby, a way to avoid routine. This is how I started. I didn't start because I wanted to make money. I've always loved fashion. I always wanted to be part of this industry. And through the social media, that was made possible. Sorry to interrupt you, but does this mean that if you have a good mobile phone and with a nice camera, a powerful camera. And if you like this uh, industry, you can propose things and you can create trends. Can you become the one to move things, probably? Well, yes, if you can do that, uh, you, of course, also have to find people who will listen to you have to find people who have the same taste like you. This depends very much on your personality. We don't uh, take photos of clothes in the way somebody indicates. We do that in the way we would wear uh, such clothes. So if you have people who have the same taste for you and they become followers and if this thing has a consistency and repeatability, you win people. And if you can do that, why not? Well, we know very well that uh, the working conditions of models uh, are not uh, uh, unknown anymore. In the past, we had uh, this uh, veil uh, in front of the of them, and we didn't know what happened. And of course, on the other hand, if not everybody, at least most of us know how a photo shooting is conducted uh, for. Uh, even for the most expensive fashion editorial. In other words, the stylists will borrow the clothes, will um, refer to the label and will return them to the producers, the brands, and there are showrooms for that. I can tell you uh, that what uh, I would now like to learn is what is the relationship between brands and fashion bloggers. Well, in the past, uh, it was a relationship of uh, hate and passion. Uh, Why is that? Because fashion bloggers were not uh, known in Greece. uh, uh, They are very popular abroad. And uh, 
initially, designers and brands could not understand what we do, and they didn't trust us. They wouldn't cooperate with people like us. Right now, we are uh, inextricably connected. They want to cooperate with us because there is a whole bunch of followers who will uh, see them through us. This is our success. We are girls of the next door. We are not uh, very tall models who wear clothes in a way that cannot be Uh, used and uh, we have given a, a different point of view. We don't have the super duper perfect dimensions. We show people that these clothes are for you as well. That's why they have come into contact with us and we have this cooperation. Of course, this uh, actually makes us <coughs> have more responsibility. Uh, we are um, actually accountable for what we do. We have to select clothes that are indeed what we profess and not only try to make money. Effie, you know print media very well. What uh, do you have to say? Well, these are times of battles with uh, the bloggers. Uh, the print uh, material, the print media with bloggers. I don't imagine you, there is a battle between you and Nancy. No, Nancy's style is very nice, so uh, there's no such thing. But anyway, these fashion bloggers trend actually shaked the foundations of uh, the whole industry, uh, the press uh, that uh, was uh, full of journalists who were enjoying benefits for so many years. Now, with uh, the fashion bloggers, um, the we had to cook things differently, and it was advertisement that uh, created the problem. This was the apple of discord. Who will get the advertisements? On the other hand, uh, a magazine has uh, different demands. Uh, you need more time. You need to have a specific type of paper. You have to print. Uh, and uh, this is different from the internet, uh, where you can see something instantly. We, you can travel wherever you like through a blog, and this is an adventure for those who love clothes and want uh, to draw information. It's easier for you to get into a world that was too professional for you to enter it in the past. It was for five journalists and eight designers who exchanged information about how a producer, a creator could become better and how journalists would show that to the public. Now we have many people in a new type of partnership. Uh, we uh, have to live with each other. Print materials can actually uh, improve the lives of bloggers, make them richer make their material richer, and the designers are in the difficult position of having to cooperate with both. Okay, my question now, do social media actually help designers? I don't know if it is uh, a question that uh, can be asked, uh, but tell me, who is your target in Greece, for instance, for you as a designer? What is the tool that creates users, but at the same time can burn them, as we say? Uh, sometimes uh, you have so much, uh, you you are so much advertised that you get burned, quote unquote. People don't want to see you anymore. Well, I'm not. Uh, 
a real fan of uh, the social media. I'm not very active myself. I should. But in any case, uh, this has to do with the type of audience you have. What is your target group? Depending on what you do. You see your target group and decide. Uh, probably uh, for some people who are on the social media, who are very active on the social media, uh, you could be uh, of value. This reminds me of what we had um, discussed um, earlier. The fashion revolution has started and has been disseminated through the social media. And the social factory conveys its messages through the social media. In fact, this is what we have been talking about in the past uh, discussion. You are a member of uh, a group and you try to identify uh, your own race. Uh, Your own race might not be within uh, your own family or within your friends, it might be somewhat far away, but through the social media, you're allowed to come in, to get in touch with them and um, join forces. And um, this is a much more democratic process because uh, the videos, this is what most people watch, and photographs, Uh, not about the models. It's not about being perfect. It has to be authentic. You have to be authentic. This is what counts. So this authenticity should have a point of reference both in the way of manufacturing production as well as uh, on the way uh, people support what they wear. Isn't that so? In fact, we are in an era where we are um, against um, authorities. We are not in favor of authorities in fashion. So if you choose to be an authority, you are bound to lose. The multicultural uh, dimension uh, does, is not very appealing. Fashion revolution is fashion, it's not activism. Well, it is through this way that we can have a reach uh, of 500, uh, of 500,000 people. Yes, but you need to always uh, be fashionable because it's if it's a trend, well, we have um, a uh, uh, way upwards and then uh, a downward trend. Um, okay, uh, whatever is trendy is fashionable. Well, it's a part of a form of the fashion, but it's not a determinant factor. Fashion has many different ingredients. This is why each person finds something uh, fascinating in that. Some people might not uh, like the trend element of fashion. They might uh, opt for a more uh, timeless approach. Uh, They might be attracted by the design or the technology of um, the materials. Um, They might be interested in a more advanced, uh, futuristic um, uh, picture, our image of uh, fashion. And a last question by me, because I will then uh, give uh, the audience uh, the opportunity to put their own uh, questions. We were talking about the codes. We were talking about religious uh, references to clothing, to clothes, and the way these can come in contact with the fashion. Is there a way for us to see the uh, economic conditions, the financial conditions uh, depicted in a piece of cloth uh, vis-à-vis the styling, the trend, etc.? For instance, uh, in uh, more um, appetizing um, decades, we see exaggerations. Um, and then uh, these exaggerations um, seem to be a little bit kitsch and 
nowadays we have a uh, um, more carefree uh, look, a uh, more carefree style, uh, even if it's about a very uh, important special occasion. Is this true? Yes. Uh, well, nowadays uh, we are not living in the era of uh, the uh, great wealth uh, that allows us to experiment, etc. So experimentation has uh, stopped. Um, we try to choose a more sophisticated uh, look, be it in the color or the, in the design of the clothes, and um, we stick to what uh, will be timeless. Uh, and something that we can um, work uh, on to add uh, a different style. Because uh, if we can use something uh, uh, for eight months uh, a year uh, by changing it uh, in the morning and the evening, etc., cetera, uh, we uh, opt for that. Um, I imagined that if uh, we were to have this discussion uh, uh, back in 1981 or in 1985, um, we would say different things. Anyway, we are interested in listening to your own views and your own opinions. Should you have any questions? Um, I don't know if there is anyone who would like to put a question or to make a comment. No one? Well, I have a, an issue to uh, put. Would you? Are you interested in the um, in negative environmental impact that your clothes uh, uh, create? Um, are you interested in the ecological footprint? Um, have you ever thought uh, of uh, this uh, issue while uh, going f- shopping? I would like to add something to your own um, question. Uh, has anyone uh, tried to identify the footprint, the ecological footprint of their clothes? Yes, please. The gentleman and the lady. Please stand up so that we can all see you. I had never thought of uh, the materials uh, of uh, my clothes until I started um, uh, listening to Miss Fiore, who um, uh, was involved in all that. I started reading about those who work in the factories, etc. I don't think that uh, there has anyone been interested in those who work in factories in Asia. But when we go shopping, well, I when I go shopping personally, I don't uh, even think about it. I now I've only started to think about that. But I don't think that there is any solution for the time being to that. Uh, more or less, uh, this is what I'd like to also comment. Uh, I wasn't uh, wondering about that, but I got across this uh, fashion revolution uh, trend, and I started uh, putting questions um, to the stores, etc. And I would check the labels uh, because I was interested in finding out more about the clothes. Of course, another thing I'd like to say is that uh, many uh, young people my age um, It doesn't even cross their mind. And this is really sad because we have um, same age uh, children um, who, instead of going to school, work in such factories. And this makes me think about what I should do to tackle this, how I can spread the word. That's it. I think here, Fiori. The answer has to do with the social media and the way fashion revolution communicates uh, all these um, activities. Uh, Yes, if you're interested, uh, we can help you because fashion revolution has uh, many students ambassadors. So we would gladly um, 
give you more information. Um, we have um, the, um, the website Fashion Revolution uh, Greece, and we can turn you into an ambassador. Those of you who are interested uh, uh, in schools, universities, etc., this is how it works. It uh, goes through the people, and uh, the answer to the uh, previous um, uh, question that was put by my mother, coincidentally, is that um, we uh, have the solution in our hands. Uh, we are more powerful than we think because if each and every one of us puts the question, then this will exert pressure. Uh, it is not by uh, coincidence that Harrods and uh, uh, the other uh, um, large um, uh, retailers uh, have started and H&M have started to identify the problem. I think that this will lead to a good uh, solution. <laughs> These are things that we see a lot, especially in uh, shops of mass consumption. There is another thing that uh, people do. They burn clothes. What is this? What are we, where are we dealing with here? Well, the solution is not to burn clothes. If we think that the life of uh, a piece of clothing has ended, because there are many ways to continue the life cycle of a piece of clothing, if you don't want to exchange it, because we have these bazaars where people can exchange clothes, I don't like uh, to throw my clothes away. My mother asks me to give her my clothes each year and I only give her uh, one sock from a pair that is not uh, there any longer. Uh, anyway, burning clothes is not uh, uh, the solution for me. We can recycle clothes because my clothes uh, may not be useful to me anymore, but they may be useful to others. And this is what happens with second-hand shops. Yes, we see that fashion adapts uh, in other countries. Second-hand uh, clothes are very common. Here, uh, it was uh, something different, uh, something that was not in our culture. It was like uh, a, a thing to see, a thing to watch. Uh, now it's become more common. What does this thing, this mean? Is it that our mentality has changed or is it that uh, we become more vintage and we want to use clothes that are in uh, fashion because they are vintage? Why has this happened? Well, first of all, it's uh, our money that is much less, and that's why we've become familiar with a trend that was uh, very popular abroad and has come to us uh, as uh, a way to facilitate things. And that's what we were saying the other day. You go in a shop and you don't know what you have in front of you? Is it uh, uh, clothes that are new, uh, old, recycled, second-hand? Uh, they are very cheap. Uh, you want to create a set, but uh, you are full of uh, uh, guilt because uh, you think about uh, the children that may have worked to create this, to produce this cloth. And we have many shops that are full of clothes like that, and we don't know where they come from. I don't know, do you have any way to see that in your uh, area, and can you inform people about it? Well, we as Fashion Revolution have always wanted to do something with Recycle and have a partnership there. And what we try to do is uh, to come back to the thread and bring that to the textile industry and have the recycling cotton, uh, which is an, a new thing. Uh, it has an innovation, an innovative character. It involves textiles and starts a new life starts. I don't have an answer to your question, but uh, I would be glad to look into it.
A last question, Dimitris. In all those years, because uh, you were mainly active in the years of the crisis, uh, in all those years, have you seen people uh, who have turned to different types of uh, markets? Uh, and who are the people who come to you? Are the younger people who come to you? People who have a different culture and a different aesthetics? Let's uh, make aesthetics important. Well, I was lucky enough uh, to live and produce in a generation that didn't know uh, all this. Uh, my parents, our parents, had tailor-made clothes. So one of the things that uh, uh, you should uh, do is uh, try to persuade people of the value of this because uh, we have so many options, so many things being uh, produced, produced, and uh, it's not easy for somebody to have something tailor-made. You have to, re to try it on many times, to make corrections. It's time-consuming. However, I'm very glad to be able to um, initiate our generation into this term, sur mesure, it's tailor-made, it's clothes that have something to say, a story to tell. So I'm glad that many young people who have either studied design or have it as a second job to earn some extra money. I see so many people creating, not only young people, older people as well, and that's also pleasant. They create things and sell them on the market. Accessories, uh, knitted uh, clothes, Scarves, for instance, old ladies knitting scarves. It's very special to have something unique, uh, handmade. Well, in Greece, this uh, juncture, this uh, difficulty we're faced with uh, has uh, worked uh, on the reverse, in a different manner. Yes, Dimitris is right. Uh, these tailor-made clothes are a nice creative procedure. You are uh, there uh, having a personal relationship with somebody. Uh, you have to measure up somebody to size his clothes so that they fit. And uh, we'll have clothes uh, that have their own energy, their own memory. And this memory is reflected to the outer world. And people who wear these clothes uh, actually can show this to the others. Um, it's like a, a metaphysic uh, element of fashion. Uh, it gets a different life. It's not something uh, easy and quick that you get bored of very easily. Well, I apologize for saying that I've discussed this with Fiori in the past, but we have uh, very often to communicate with each other. It's the so-called uh, supermarket culture in the fashion industry. What about this? Well, uh, this is a question we had when we started how can you speak to a country that is uh, so much deep in the crisis? Why should we buy 10 t-shirts with 2 euros and not one with 40 euros? Is it that different? Well, look, this is a, an issue of psychology. This is a 
a way to satisfy a need that is unsatisfied, probably. I managed to, to buy many clothes with the money I have. Of course, I disregard uh, working conditions, quality, etc. Uh, I've paid two euros, but was these two euros a waste or was it um, a problem or did I even exacerbate a problem? Do you have a question? Yes, Mrs. Blaviano. Well, you spoke about fashion and clothes, and I was thinking about what uh, Dimitri said at the beginning, that even the cultural uh, center has uh, become a fashion. And I was thinking about our logo. Our uh, foundation is a not-for-profit foundation. And how is it connected with this topic today? It is because on the one hand, we have young people who try to do something in an industry that is not easy because there is this uh, social dimension in what Fiori does because we have uh, this uh, element of technology in what Nancy does, and we also have uh, this element in Ephesus uh, work. So fashion is, for those of us who are interested in following it, is not only clothes. Maybe we don't want uh, to uh, put everything into uh, the same under the same category. Well, I, I, we hear very often people saying, "I was in Kufonisia I, when nobody was there. I discovered it back then. Now so many people go there. I don't want to go there anymore. It's like being." Uh, Christopher Columbus, uh, you uh, discover something and then you leave it back. This uh, is something that we do in fashion, in everything in our life. Well, this is a very interesting approach. It depicts the way we live, our habits, the way we think. And uh, to wrap up, because I think we have had a lot of food for thought after our discussion and our uh, dialogue. Well, do you have a question? Please. Good afternoon. I'd like to point out that uh, clothes are amongst the few products that can be recycled uh, as a whole. And this is really important to know. Already we have seen some actions in certain municipalities, etc., in certain cities. We see um, recycling um, um, recycling bins uh, for clothes um, uh, because we either recycle clothes uh, as clothes or we use them as fillings. That's all. Another, another question, another comment. I'm involved in embroidery and knitting, etc. Old clothes uh, can be cut in pieces and we can make uh, new objects uh, uh, with patches, etc. So they're extremely useful. Uh, it's not to throw away anything. Uh, we shouldn't throw away anything. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yes, please. What I wanted to say, until you get the microphone, uh, is that um, uh, following a discussion I had recently as to whether fashion is art, and since it is art, because we have works of art, etc., we ended up saying that um, uh, art is what withstands the test of time vis-a-vis -vis its quality, its value, its um, energy. There's all this um, process and uh, research that gets uh, more people involved in uh, the industry. 
It's not only about uh, uh, something being fashionable. It is a big part of our society because the end result uh, has behind it a whole chain of uh, process uh, of production, uh, design, uh, embroidery, uh, textile industry, Um, craftsmanship, um, uh, factories, etc., a whole uh, huge mechanism of design. We are talking about uh, uh, people who would be able to find a job and produce um, in uh, good conditions of work, uh, allowing us to continue to dream. Uh, so the Kufonisia complex of islands will remain beautiful. Yes, please. Good afternoon. I would like to make a comment vis-à-vis uh, -vis the volume of clothes that you talked about. Um, uh, I'd rather have more clothes, uh, uh, not because their quality is uh, better, but because uh, there are many different uh, Uh, models, there are many different standards, etc. So I'd rather have uh, more clothes that will allow me to imitate uh, all the styles uh, because I'm experimenting uh, rather than having something more expensive uh, that will not allow me to be able to imitate uh, many styles. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know if there's anyone who would like to answer that. It's a very difficult um, Uh, comment. Yes, it's a very frank and honest uh, comment. Um, I think that um, it has to do with the responsibility that um, we as fashion bloggers have and as next door uh, girls to communicate uh, to all uh, Uh, our uh, uh, ladies, that it's not about uh, um, the number of uh, clothes. Uh, it has to do with uh, the way you feel while wearing the clothes and uh, the way they express one part of your personality. This is what uh, I'd like to comment. And one more question. Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for uh, the discussion and participation. Uh, One or two thoughts. Uh, first of all, I think that um, uh, whatever is expensive is good is a stereotype. Uh, maybe uh, the whatever is cheap might not be good uh, could be a stereotype that is true, but uh, it's a trap that we should avoid. Effie mentioned earlier a whole chain of processes of things that take place before the end product uh, reaches the um, window of the store. I'm a journalist uh, and an interesting proposal that has never been turned into a documentary of a German uh, colleague was to uh, keep track of a, a group um, that used to work um, in a city in Germany three uh, years uh, back, uh, trying to make a decision on the next um, uh, color trend in car industry. Uh, this journalist could not able to could, could not find the funds uh, uh, to finance uh, his documentary. But well this was back in 2005-2006. Uh, people were um, left without any uh, new uh, ideas, inspirations, etc. and um, uh, fashion designers, etc., and uh, big fashion houses had uh, um, paid people to uh, go out in the streets to see how fashion is something that is uh, uh, is uh, being created on the street. So one can see that there is a whole process. This is a little bit scary for me to conclude uh, because, uh, uh, well, I was scared uh, once um, uh, by two things. Uh, since I'd never wear miniskirts, uh, I wasn't able to find anything uh, uh, but miniskirts. Uh, and uh, there was another occasion where everything in fashion was gray. And uh, this frightened me. It's uh, you, the uh, fashion revolution. It's a second hand. In the past, we had uh, the American market. 
through which we could uh, find second-hand uh, clothes. Nowadays, we can find many more things. Uh, uh, we have received a question. Most of the questions that you've sent us uh, via email in as ISNF um, questions uh, have already been answered, uh, such as uh, what is fashion or the reference to several uh, different historic eras or to religions, etc. But Nancy, we've got a question for you. Would you wear secondhand clothes? And to what extent? Could you give such a direction since uh, you exert uh, influence? Yes, I would wear secondhand. I already wear secondhand clothes. Uh, and I think that it's um, our own responsibility to let people know that they shouldn't feel bad about it. Uh, abroad, this is a new trend. And in Greece, it's a very nice way for us to be able to identify small treasures um, that are a bit cheaper. Or even if we have um, at home some things that um, we are bored with, etc., we can uh, exchange them. And We, it's, it's some kind of uh, recycling. I think it's up to us. It's our responsibility to let people know. Yes, please. I represent uh, the Margarita Foundation, and this is where we, together with people with disabilities, um, weave uh, certain objects out of um, uh, fabric, uh, pieces of fabric that we um, uh, cut and shred, and they can be reused. Now, vis-a-vis -vis the number of clothes, etc., I'd like to say something uh, of a philosophical nature. Plato, according to Plato, art has been given to us by the goddess Athena, and they have given us the arts and crafts because through them we can identify measure, moderation. And this is uh, true because uh, no matter what uh, kind of art we're involved in, one can uh, identify exaggeration, one can uh, identify moderation, etc. Why do we need moderation for? Uh, this uh, is the balance uh, of our soul. So at some point we lost uh, this balance and we need to find it once again. Thank you. I'm going to the previous uh, question. Do you believe uh, that if um, uh, there was no Rana Plaza uh, accident, um, uh, there would there would be a, yet a fashion revolution uh, system? Many people knew what was going on in the fashion industry before the Rana Plaza accident. Uh, people knew. Uh, so I am in the shoe industry, and um, I travel to China a lot, etc. And it seems to me quite simple. I mean, sometimes you are immune to what you see. I work uh, with uh, companies uh, where in uh, uh, very crummy places, so we have people working uh, there. Most people know what um, is going on in the fashion industry. Of course, uh, this uh, accident was a very bad uh, uh, accident, but do you believe that um, if we didn't have this uh, accident, uh, uh, things would have changed? Uh, this is a very hypothetical, of course, question. I wasn't aware of this accident. I heard about it in uh, Impact Hub uh, after the fashion revolution had uh, started. Uh, I imagine that those who had um, uh, created the fashion revolution movement already knew about it. Uh, this is uh, why uh, this movement was established at the same time. Obviously, there was uh, a, um, a critical mass that uh, uh, already knew about it. Uh, I think that um, it was bound to happen at some point. Um, thank you. So at this point, I think that we, uh, for uh, good or for bad, uh, we need to put an end to this um, uh, 
uh, dialogue. Uh, it has so many extensions. It has so many different aspects. Uh, we have so many people working in the fashion industry under uh, various uh, conditions. So we'd like to warmly thank all of you for being with us here today. Those of you who have um, uh, followed this through the internet, uh, through the snf.org uh, 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 slash um, uh, live. This was within the framework of the monthly dialogues, an initiative by the Stavros Narcos Foundation that uh, brings us closer and helps us listen to others. So, since uh, today it seems to be a summer day, uh, we have heard about the Summer Nostos Festival uh, program for June. And as you leave this hall, uh, please uh, feel free to get the relevant document um, pertaining to the program. It's a whole week full of uh, uh, dialogue, full of uh, music, uh, uh, discussions, uh, events, uh, performances. Uh, um, so we'll see you again in May. On um, May, just uh, one month before uh, summer, where people are uh, uh, going on a diet, uh, we think that we should go against this uh, trend and enjoy it. Uh, we want to open up a discussion about around uh, uh, food, uh, food culture, food trends, uh, and around the central element of um, food, food uh, uh, as against communication, uh, that uh, food means communication and contact. Uh, we share things uh, together. So this will be held uh, on May 23rd uh, here at the um, Cultural Center. The details will soon follow. Uh, we will be in another hall of the Cultural Center. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you in May.